Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a Netflix documentary, My Octopus Teacher. Right off the bat, I love this documentary. I'm wondering where I would put it in the science. Uh, nah. I guess I could put it in, I'll just maybe put it in all my playlists. I got uh, into a conversation with a friend. We were talking. We sometimes give each other some, uh, you know, things to watch, or ideas to things to watch. And this came up. And I had mentioned something really cool I saw. It was like a little clip of something. And she mentioned this. And I was like, oh, I'm going to definitely check this out. So it's a 2020 uh, documentary directed by Pippa Enrich and James Reed. I really got into this. There's a real delicate balance you have to do with documentaries. Because I could watch a science video an hour long, an hour and a half, two hours, maybe even a lecture, four hours on octopus and all uh, type of sea creatures and what's going on with the reefs. This is uh, a human story, and it just happens to have a connection to life in this reef. And in particular, an octopus. Right off the bat, you get a feeling of the person who's doing the diving. There's uh, Craig Forster. Um, there's a connection that's made with something familiar with everybody. I think, well, not everybody, but people at certain times in their life. And you're burned out from work. Things are going on. You have children, a family, and you're just looking for that um, spark again. You're looking for that uh, drive and that uh, you know passion for things. And he decides to go. Um, uh, I think it's like cold water reef off South Africa, and he goes to start looking around under the water. Starts taking um, pictures and film again, and he could see. His attitude changing. And during these escapades, he comes upon a young octopus. And this documentary is this journey of human introspection and nature. Uh, you see this growth through his passion, what he loves to do, how much of an impact nature has on him. And in particular... A relationship that's formed and i've always been fascinated with uh octopus and octopi however you would say it's just a fascinating creature underwater it's just amazing what it could do and then it can get uh, out of the water you see some great videos online of them like at night in some zoo and stuff they open their um containment whatever it's they're in and they go, they take a fish, they eat, they come back, they close it. It's just amazing. And when you see this documentary, you get to see those aspects of an octopus. But there's that emotion that you get from, you know, connecting with real life issues with people, with problems, and even mental health issues. Just that thing that we're searching for. So it's a really good balance. Now, I'll admit there was a part where I was a little apprehensive. I didn't want it to go into too much of the family stuff because he started bringing his son in. But it was done good. It, it, it was great. I was just worried here and there. The only other document, well, I don't know if it's recent, but like Grizzly Man is a good documentary. It's a little out there, but just fascinates me. Uh, bears and wildlife. And this Craig Foster is just, uh, he, he has this thing where he won't wear a wetsuit, but he'll wear, he wears the thing over his head. Um, but he wants to be closer to uh, his surroundings and nature and water. So there's that aspect too. But this is just some really interesting stuff. It just the things you learn about octopus are amazing. And. The way it's edited is for perfect. It's got a great feel to it. There's this um, connection and worry and wonder you get watching it. So it, this documentary hits all the points. So kudos to everybody. 
I think it's even winning awards. And, um, you know, it was like a highlight of these festivals. And I think you, these things should be done more often as well. It, like I said, it's a little hard for me to say, oh, I love, all do- I love documentaries in general. Because they don't maintain a good balance. And this was just a really great way of showing it. You are so connected to the human condition, the aspects of this guy. Just, you know, reevaluating things, going back into the water, you know, you, you're looking at this uh, discovery of this beautiful planet we live on, the ecosystems, these coral reefs. So I think it's a reef. I think that's how it's actually described, right? It's got, what are they, what's the word? They use like biodiversity or it's just fascinating. And then the trials and the um, journey that they go through together is fascinating. Just thinking about what an octopus is. And, you know, a lot of times when I do my podcast, it's always like, uh, you know what? I don't do too many plot, give away too many plots or spoilers. Um, I'll wait for more in-depth videos if I ever do those. But on something like this, it's weird. But I also don't want to give away certain things. <laughs> it's got that um, aspect to it, too. Uh But I guess if you know a lot about octopus and you know about how they function and you can kind of guess where it goes, but it's just, it's fascinating, thrilling, uh, a little sad, uh, hopeful, just a perfect blend because documentaries can be really difficult or maybe for me, I guess there is a type of person, people who just love to watch documentaries. I was watching a, um, it was a, a series from the Royal Institute on Science, and it was a women's panels, like 18 videos, and one after the other, about an hour long. I could see people going, you're crazy, like, because I'll watch the uh, Leonard Suskind seven-hour, four-hour lectures where he's he got a marker on a board. So, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm looking for different things and you know, uh, the content I'm watching and, you know, absorbing and this is just a perfect type of documentary it just got it's not even that long does it say how long it was it was 85 minutes it's got a great narrative the filming is just amazing capturing things is just or or you know it just inspires you also but you're hit with this or the underwater reef I want to see if I can find out. Where did it say it was? Uh, False Bay near Cape Town, South Africa. Near Simmons Town on the Cape Peninsula, which is exposed to the cold Benguela current of the Atlantic Ocean. And like I said, on every level, I think this this works. I get You get such a... Uh, a good feeling because even though you have certain aspects of documentary that shows you know i love the lions uh and the uh some of the predators and the big cats but nature is a bitch sometimes it's really could be fucked up from our perspective for, for them it's just what they do and when you see this aspect you forget how just thrilling it is under, see, underwater. Now, I'm not a good swimmer. So, for instance, if you ask me where would be my preference, it would be going into a friend's backyard, hanging out in the pool once in a while, go under, dive, go, go, you know, push off to the other side, relax. I don't like the ocean, though. <laughs> I don't have good experiences there. If it's not cuts on your feet, it is getting pulled by currents, and I'm not a good swimmer or a swimmer at all in that sense. Um, I just have a flail list, I guess. It's just crazy. So I'm not really that guy, but because of that, these are windows to these worlds that I can't visit, that I can't, you know, enjoy to that extent. So it is really uh, sometimes a letdown or a, just a pure surprise, and this was pure surprise. I love some of the visuals, the topics, the subject itself. And when you think about the octopus teacher, 
it's really a good narrative story done well like i said there might have been a time where i was like a little apprehensive like oh it's not gonna go this way is it where there would be like a huge chunk of um oh i gotta deal with family stuff and that, you know what what they did was fine it just in my brain that's where i go i gotta shoot off in all different directions as i'm watching this but beautiful scenery themes you just can't say enough about this this is just uh up there with the jane goodhall stuff with the uh primates and sometimes you get this with the lion stuff but it's usually from a distance you know he's going in there no wetsuit just his little uh wet shorts and his hoodie thing whatever snorkel and he's got to breathe so he's got to go back up when he runs out of breath and things are going on and he wants to be closer to everything you know uh to share more in the environment that he's in and you can see everything on his face and his voice and the narration it comes through well it just gives you the feelings you're supposed to get and from beginning to end it's fascinating it kind of ends more with his you know family since it started with him and like i said it is a human story also you're looking at um maybe a certain time in person's life a certain age looking at what you've done what you've accomplished you're working so hard every day you've got the things you really matter your family and stuff and can you ignite this passion of yours again because i think the connection to what the work he was doing was like, you know what, I don't know if I want to go into the water and it'll feel like work again. And it's all the filming and then the editing and that, that, um, you know, issue permeates the beginning of this documentary. And you can see this stress and this relief wash away from him and a new vigor and a new excitement. It's just riveting to watch. And, can I say enough about octopus and how fucking cool they are? Their brain is mostly centered in their suckers. It's what they could do with their body is fucking amazing. Like you just you could just search octopus craziness on YouTube, whatever. And you might not want to see a documentary and a, a story. They're the most fascinating creatures. I think they're like the closest thing to an alien we could. Uh, describe on earth if we wanted to like compare how cre creatures and beings work they're just fascinating they're scary as hell sometimes but they will do crazy things they'll walk they'll turn themselves into different shapes and textures it's just mind-blowing and it to see this relationship they have and it's not like um i don't know a pet dog or a cat but it's there and it's felt and filmed and just done right enough narration enough family enough personal uh you know development and in this alien world of this underwater reef and all of its beauty and splendor and terrors well maybe not for the guy it was maybe a little scary you know you don't want these fucking I don't know what they're called, like Rama, uh, Pyama, Sharks, or something like that. They And you see these encounters, and it's mythology of um, you know, showing the development of uh, this octopus and other creatures' methods and surviving and living underground and, I mean, uh, underwater. Just, just really uh, hits all the right buttons. I totally recommend My Octopus Teacher. I really, I could say, like, Grizzly Man is, like, the only thing, I think, before this that I um, really was uh, taken away by, and for other reasons, because it's not, um, maybe I'll do a podcast on that. Did I do one already? I, mean, I had to have it written somewhere, like a little outline on a piece of paper, but there's a different type of personal message, personal struggle, and just a fucking bizarre... A set of circumstances and it and the ending is just mind-blowing in that another sense here you get that but you get this better 
rounded, um, hopeful feeling. And it's just uh, breathtaking. It's a breath of fresh air. There's um, so much to think about, so much to wonder, the, the aspects of underwater, just how special this planet is and how special the creatures are and we are. And I don't get that um, uh, every animal equal, you know, type thing. I try to balance it out more because, you know, fuck a lion and I'm not living in some fucking mountain and my town is arguing about killing mountain lions or whatever. And yes, I understand biodiversity. I would want scientists and people to give me the idea, but there's no way I'm going to take them over fucking humans who are getting eaten by them. So in their own habitats and stuff, fine. And what we do to the ocean these days is kind of, you know, disappointing. We're finding all these plastics everywhere. And so I do want to keep that balance. Like, you know, the planet is important. Climate changes is uh, a real thing. The environment's all over. The old eco ecosystems, how they, um, you know, work together. Even going down to the core of our planet, which is spinning a molten iron in magnetic fields. It all is so delicate, it's all so special, and I say this uh, every now and then, but for me, this is my spirituality, it's just the awe of the universe, and what a crazy planet we live on, uh, we hurtle through space on a, a spaceship, which is a planet, it's got such wondrous features to it, and stories, and this is the perfect blend of them human story the uh alien sea creature story and just how we go through life and we take inspiration and we can label an octopus a teacher for many reasons and why this documentary is so good watch my octopus teacher if it's not on netflix i'm sure you can find it somewhere it's that good it's that um meaningful well to me it is but i think it has that thing that doc good documentaries that survive and thrive have and a good blend of human story good editing it doesn't have to even be this topic you could watch a documentary on uh jaws or movie making and stuff it's how to keep the editing the pacing right and this just had that perfect blend of a connective story animals a beautiful uh you know scenery and location Watch My Octopus Teacher. It's highly recommended. Hope everybody's doing well. Best to you all. Take care.